actually, uh, well, you just began to answer one of the questions I was going to ask. I, I have, uh, uh, I'll, I'll sort of take off from Julia's question, which um, expressed very well, better than I could have, uh, an uneasiness about your argument, um, which is among other things that if one, you focus your discussion on the question, your dependent variable is, is there a gradual growth in the proportion of uh, the national income that is uh, that is spent in social programs, basically on, I think, education, social insurance, and um, redistribution. And from that point of view, you say there's there, it sort of goes up. But if you step back and look at the big picture, in particular, the questions you began with, which have to do with economic insecurity, um, long-term income growth, um, uh, opportunity. Uh, distribution of life chances, and I would also add, you know, inequality, then it's not so clear that we've seen this gradual movement in the right direction. In fact, I think one could easily argue that there are various ways in which we see retrogression. And once you, and if you put it that way, then it's less clear that you can, you can have the optimistic assumption that things, if things go on as they have in the past, they're probably going to get better. I, I, I'm not so sure, but um, I would make, uh, two observations, and you can tell me whether you think I'm right. I mean, I think part of the, there was a kind of, there was a kind of slippage in your discussion, I thought, which helped leave a gap for the problem that Julia raised, that I think there, there are two sort of disconnections in your talk. You began by saying the big set of problems you're, you're uh, thinking about are problems of increasing economic insecurity, um, reduction in, in opportunity for a lot of people and low income growth. Then you said presumably one aspect of what might make those things better is the growth of social programs in basically education, redistribution, and uh, social insurance. And that's what you talked about. But in fact, that leaves most of the big problem untouched. In other words, overall, what's actually happening with these other things? Now that leads to a second disconnection, which is that your main focus was when you talk about, say, the size of government or what it means for the country to be more or less social democratic. Um, operationally, in this talk, your main focus is on the question of how much is government, especially the federal government, spending on these three specific things: education, redistribution, and social insurance. But the other aspect of what social democracy or the New Deal involves is the question of government's role in the economy, the social life, and regulation of various sources. And every once in a while, you touch on that. I mean, that's where climate change comes in. And that's where uh, also the point that you raised about what the structure of American capitalism might look like. And if uh, uh, I wonder whether you think the kind of argument you're making about a slow but probably gradual growth in the proportion of the national income that goes to the social program also applies to the role of government in terms of regulation and in terms of shaping the, the power structure within political economy. Because again, I think we've seen massive retrogression in that um, since the 1980s. Um, and that leads to really my last question, which uh, is a corollary of the second, which is, I think that, although you make a very good argument as to why concerns about the changing structure of social and political power may not be as bad as hackered as people think they are. But I'm not totally convinced, because I think there are various ways in which the really dramatic increase in income inequality over the long term, gradually shapes other things, just as you said. It, you know, you can transform money into all sorts of other things. Second, um, I think, and this I know from other things you've written, um, I think the collapse of union movement has been tremendously important, not only in terms of shaping patterns of, of um, distribution of income and reducing restraints on this increasing inequality, but I think it's really had a dramatic effect on American politics, including the fact that it helps explain why 
working class people are both less likely to vote, and when they do vote, are more likely to vote Republican. Now, um, I, your argument, I think, has generally been that, yes, you can see that, but you don't really think there's any way to uh, reverse that. So that we need to find other ways of finding countervailing power to the organized, um, uh, the organized strength of business and to these tendencies towards increasing inequality. Um, I'm not. Um, I hope you're wrong about that because I, 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 I don't think. I think there are limits to how much uh, the union movement can be um, uh, rejuvenated. And I think also that it can only be one part of a broader pattern of trying to build up strong countervailing powers. But without that, it's hard for me to see how the dramatic changes in the whole structure of capitalism, which does lead to greater insecurity, greater concentration, and so on, could be reversed. I mean, I, I, I think, um, and therefore, for all of these reasons, I think that I'm inclined to agree with what I think was the thrust of Julian's question that, although I think you make a very good argument, if one steps back and looks at the big picture, the implications are not so optimistic. I'll add one last point, which I think I may be completely wrong about this, but here is my sense that in American, part of what I think you have generally argued, but I may be wrong about this because uh, your, one of your last comments suggested otherwise, that it's probably going to be very hard to slow down the dramatic increase in uh, uh, wage and salary income and other kinds of pre-tax income. And that if we want to reduce inequality, the most like that, the best ways to do it are probably through various kinds of redistribution and tax measures. Um, my feeling is that it will continue to be true in American society that it's much easier to legitimate um, what looks to people like earned income. And it's always going to be much harder to legitimate income re redistribution because it says for many, many Americans, I think, there's still this sense that everybody gets a certain amount of money. And then once you get that money, it's only at that point that there's any decision that's made about how to redistribute it. So anything that could flatten or at least reduce the inequality of pre-tax, pre-distribution income, like increasing unions or um, increasing the minimum wage or various other things or changing the structure of capitalism is going to be much more legitimate in most Americans' eyes and much easier to maintain. Now, if that's actually not possible, then we'll have to go with the others. But that's the, those are my feelings. What, what do you think? 